Thank you very much for tuning in. Hopefully this is my last video on Theranos because I really can't hear her voice anymore. And this video is actually uh, going to be very simple. I just took a look at all of her patents because I was wondering, okay, what is it that she actually did scientifically? Now I know a little bit more because I looked at her old pitch deck. I looked at her scientific talks, which are all different videos that I made and also the Q&A after the scientific talk. So she's talking quite a bit about that. And the short answer is she mostly focused on the design of the mini lab. What I did is I looked at a lot of her patents. So Theranos has a lot of patents. And even though Theranos itself is closed down, there's still the Theranos IP company. And the Theranos IP company, the last time I checked, they were actually still in litigation. So they were actually still suing people that were using their patents. So not only did she give a bad name to everybody doing these types of point of care devices and everybody trying to do microfluidics and lab on chip and all of that stuff, but also she's suing or the company, not her, but let's say the company, the IP company is still suing people who are trying to do that. So not only did she set back this whole industry part, but also she's still blocking others who might actually be able to innovate in the space, which is such a horrible thing if you think about it. So what I notice is that most of her patents are about the design. So she has this thing called the mini lab, which is like a huge laboratory condensed into a small little space, like a point of care device. These are most of her patents are about the design. So where are the cartridges, you have a tiny centrifuge, you have like all of this. And then the other patents are more or less about the sample collection. She has a lot of patents on sample collection. There's even stuff with a finger warmer to hold the finger warm just to make sure that the sample is collected properly. And only a tiny little fraction of all of her patents are actually about biological assays or anything that's actually used for testing. She has one patent on vitamin D measurement in blood, which is super sad. You can order on Amazon a vitamin D test and you can measure it in the blood. So there's nothing really unique about that. And detectors. So this is part of the design. A lot of detector stuff where oh, this detector is what we're going to use and we have a small detector and stuff like that. They patented a lot of stuff around the science because they didn't have the science. They, as far as I know, they never published peer review. So they never published the actual research results of a measuring mechanism or the actual research result of having a marker and they measure it in the mini lab and so that they don't have that. So without the science, I really focus just on the design. I have to say, I'm gonna keep this video very, very short. I'm just gonna blend in quite a few images and just say that most of the things she did were really just about the design, which is the Steve Jobs thing. Steve Jobs gave talk just about the design of things because he could do it because his product was all about the user interface and how the user interfaces with the iPhone, with the iPad and all of that. But it doesn't make any sense for a point of care device that is heavily reliant on the science behind what it measures, the accuracy of what it measures. So Steve Jobs never had to talk about the accuracy of hitting a button. He talks about how well it is used and how easy things are and you can just drag and drop, use two fingers to make the map small and big. So all of that makes sense for technology like that, which is end to consumer, but something like a very scientific device doesn't make any sense. So, I mean, look at this patent. This looks completely ridiculous. It looks like a dog. I mean, it is a dog and it's like a finger warmer to have good measurements. I don't know why you patent that. So here's the thing. Patents are expensive. It's expensive to patent something, keep something, basically the more territories you have. And then also if you want to keep it up to date and also making sure that nobody else is using them, this is super expensive. So I think a good amount of the money she raised is probably went there suing other people and all that. So I think her legal costs are probably ridiculously high. Legal costs and payroll. Yeah, obviously also devices are also really expensive, but I think her legal costs are probably really, really high. Yeah, I don't know why all of her patents kind of look a little ridiculous. There's another one. It looks like a jellyfish and it's smiling. I don't know why they're publishing patents like that. And then they have the tiny little centrifuge. So the centrifuge is basically, you see this in the, in the scientific talk. I actually showed the video of the centrifuge. So they have that. So this is all about the mini lab, about miniaturizing the laboratory. But the thing is, at this point, they actually didn't have the technology yet. So you see this in her scientific talk when she kind of talks about, okay, we just developed this in 2016 and this patent is from 2015. So basically they say that at this point, they might not even have had this. They just described it and just patented the whole thing. All right, very short video. I don't want to drag on too long. I hope this is kind of interesting. Saying, see you in the next video.